Me and Garrison are at, are at odds with my dad because I was met with like just a wall and there was no line of dialogue. I have worried about my boy's mental health. Gabriel feels everything very, very deeply, but he's also the kid who doesn't say anything. And Garrison just seems angry or sad or like he's, he's not his as happy-go-lucky as he used to be. For them, this is just a lot more devastating than it has been for my kids. Hey friends, it's Katie from Without a Crystal Ball. Welcome back to my channel. It is Thursday, March 21st, 2024. What happens on a reality show when a tragedy strikes and you're in the middle of filming a series and a season and one of your mem cast members or talent or principals of the show ends up passing away? What if the circumstances surrounding that incident with the cast member could have been exacerbated by Things that happened on the show, including the way someone was portrayed in the media, the way someone was portrayed on the show, certain circumstances they were forced to be a part of or film on the show, or behaviors from other cast members of the show that could have contributed to their poor mental health. Can the show and the show's producers, along with the TV network, be held responsible legally if a cast member ends up passing away? due to their mental health declining as a result of their participation in a show? The answer is complicated, but it's happened before. In fact, Garrison Brown is not the first individual from a reality show to take their own life. In 2020, an article was published by The Mirror, which indicated that over 38 reality television stars across the world had also come to the same fate after their participation on a reality television show. Reality television executive producers and production companies are known for being ruthless and treating cast members and pushing them to limits in order to get good sound bites and to get the most compelling drama for a show. In cases such as Sister Wives, cast members might be forced to address comments that might incite or provoke extreme reactions or they may be forced to be in the same room filming together a scene that they may not want to be a part of. Additionally, because the way that contracts are heavily in favor of the production company, it's very difficult for a principal or one of the people signed as a cast member to decline from participating in a filming setting. To loosen up cast members and to get the most compelling and the most off-the-wall drama, reality shows are often fueled and filled with liquor or other substances to get the cast to have their mouths become a whole lot looser. In the recent seasons of Sister Wives, Cody Brown's eyeballs have been incredibly bloodshot, and he was acting at times completely intoxicated. Many people who watched the show believed that Cody might be intoxicated, and that could be why some of the statements he was making were off the wall, vile, and fueled with anger. Other People that have watched the show have also accused Mary Brown of at times slurring her words when she's sitting there on the couch. It wouldn't be outside the realm of possibility that cast members of Sister Wives are using alcohol to get through their couch sessions to answer questions, to loosen them up, and to manage any anxiety they might have about speaking about their family. Now, a problem with all of these methods is that Reality stars do not have a lot of protection, but reality shows bring a level of exposure to someone that most people will never understand. If you or I were to have a fight with someone, our fight will stay private. You will not have it going over on a sound bite over and over again, and it won't become part of a look back clip. It won't become back of a rerun. You won't have to talk about it at a tell all. It's in the past. In the world of Sister Wives, their darkest moments and the worst things that they say to each other become sound bites that each of them hear over and over and over. And so when Cody makes disparaging comments about his children, those clips become part of their 
the children's memory searing into their mind what their father has said about them. Kind of compartmentalized. Janelle is out of mind and out of sight for me right now. Yes, this is a struggle. My loyal wife and her children, we, we want something special. So I am blocking everything else out for today. You no, know, my kids have not talked to their dad. They generally ignore him um, because they're like, what's the point of having a conversation? I remember him saying something along the lines of he only cares about his minor children or something like that. So. What I said to Gabriel, once you were out of my, like graduated from high school, my obligation to you shifts. It's an obligation of mutual respect. If the relationship goes bad, then it's like, go get your own place. You don't belong in my home if you can't respect me. Remember, it's my home, it's not yours. Well, I think she's pointing her finger at like some kind of favoritism towards Solomon and Ariella. Some kind of favoritism towards Solomon and Ariella, which is the same favoritism I always gave to any of the little- Cody didn't even have to be verbally abusive because half of the things that were happening on the series had to do with the rejection that the boys were feeling and Janelle's children were feeling from their father because of his favoritism with the other kids. So if Robin's children got good Christmas presents, that's a reminder to them about what they didn't get. If Robin's kids go get their ears pierced with their dad, that's another thing that the bo that's another activity the boys haven't done with their dad. Not that they would get their ears pierced, but it's an example. Anytime Cody did something special with Robin's kids and it's on the show, that's another point, pain point for children that have been rejected by him. So while Cody uses the show to not only manipulate and abuse his kids, he also uses the show as a way to get back at them by showing them where he's happy and why he's happy and reminding people that the reason why he's happy is because they obey him. So with Garrison facing rejection from his father and then verbal abuse for more than three seasons on the show, does reality television have a responsibility? Did the production company play a role? Is there a way for Janelle or his estate to sue Puddle Monkey Television because of his poor mental health. Janelle brought up in one of the episodes called in, The Writing is on the Wall, which appeared in episode in season 18. She said that she was worried about Gabriel's mental health and Garrison's mental health. She said that Garrison was not as happy and had been more withdrawn. The show was exacerbating the issues in the family. It was only filming about the drama and not their other everyday lives because drama sells. So it was creating an environment that was not healthy for any of the people on the show. The entire show makes them revisit their darkest times, their most deepest wounds, and continue to talk about it over and over and over again. Not to mention the children on the show were not being paid. Most states allow for wrongful death lawsuits to move forward in cases of suicide, particularly if there is negligence on the end of the defendant who is being sued and whether or not their negligence contributed to the declining mental health which caused the individual to take their own life. For instance, both the state of Arizona and Utah have stipulations within their laws that allow for individuals to sue employers or workplaces if they experience bullying or harassment in the workplace that led to declining mental health and suicide. So in order to sue, they actually have to sue not only the production company, but they would have to sue the person that's bullying them. In this case, if Garrison's estate wishes to sue, they would likely have to include Cody Brown in a lawsuit for wrongful death. Now, the lawsuit would have to be filed depending on where the filming took place in Arizona, but the company is actually located in Utah. However, the company, the production company, has a location based in Arizona. So theoretically, they could sue in the state of Arizona. In the state of Arizona, in order to prove civil liability for these types of deaths, the general rule, and this is coming from a legal website, is that 
it must be caused by an intentional act that is that is the responsibility of the person who died. But courts have also recognized exceptions by rule of rule and found liability for suicide in situations including when a person or institution with a special duty of care fails to prevent a suicide, work-related injury results in it, drug makers fail to warn the product's increase in risk of it, or harassing and abusive or bullying behavior leads to suicide. They must show that the individual or the institution being sued negligently and carelessly caused or failed to prevent this event. Even though Garrison's not technically an employee of Puddle Monkey Productions, nor is he an employee of Warner Brothers, he could someone from the estate could still sue them under negligence under this clause basically stating that the production company and Warner Brothers had a special duty of care to ensure and responsibility to ensure his well-being. So if you want to understand more about what defining duty of care could look like in reality television, a website under Benjamin Bonatti says a duty of care owned, owed by reality TV production companies includes providing a safe and healthy environment, addressing any medical or mental health concerns, and ensuring that contestants are not subjected to any undue emotional distress or exploitation. This duty extends beyond filming of the show and includes aftercare services to support contestants after filming has ended. So theoretically, the reality show production companies should be working to make sure that their reality television contestants and cast have care and that their mental health concerns are being addressed. Because Garrison had not gotten help and not received care, Theoretically, they could sue them because one, they could say this was not a safe work environment and two, they were aware, the production company was aware based on how they were promoting the show and the sound bites that they were making that what Cody was saying and his behaviors on the show could have, they should have had a reasonable expectation to know that that would hurt and cause emotional distress. To one of his children. The production company is the one who puts out the content. Cody himself is the person saying these words. Again, they could sue both the production company, Warner Brother Television, who is the owner of the show, and Cody if they wanted to go into the weeds and get very deep into it. Now, suing production companies is challenging because there are so many clauses in these contracts that make it so reality stars cannot sue. However, the day of reckoning is here and reality star contestants are filing lawsuits like you wouldn't believe all around the country. Bravo and NBC Universal have been getting sued all over the country from former stars of the reality house of the Real Housewives and other shows that have been airing on Bravo related to negligence, coercion, being discrimination, uh, disability discrimination, coercion of producers to make them drink so that they will get better sound bites. There has been so there have been numerous lawsuits that have been filed against Andy Cohen as a part of those franchises as well. So there are ways to be for someone to sue, and there are grounds here for a lawsuit. Cody's actions, this production company had a responsibility to ensure that the children on the show would not be exploited. They had a responsibility to ensure that they did not cause harm to the people that were on the show. By making a show about family drama, the family is unable to actually escape the drama. They're unable to escape any sort of sense of privacy in their family because everything that happens within the family could become a storyline for the show. When you lack boundaries in a family and you lack safety within your own family because it's on a show, the reality television producers have a duty to protect some level of privacy for their cast members so that their mental health doesn't decline dramatically. It doesn't mean that a lawsuit like this would even like move forward or it could end up settling. 
TLC has been sued in the past and production companies for my 600, uh, 600 pound life, my 600 pound life. That franchise has been sued by more cast members with un, with it being very unsuccessful moving forward, including a cast member that died by suicide and his lawsuit by his family was actually thrown out last year. It's very challenging, but it's possible. The other issue here is could this, could any of his surviving people sue for unpaid wages? Yes. And there's a high probability that they could get payment for those wages because under federal law, every single person that's working is required to receive a minimum wage. And then under state law, you have to be paid a minimum wage as well. So there's a federal minimum wage and then there's a state minimum wage. And so in the state of Arizona, they are required to pay the kids. Now, they'll try to get around it and say, well, we paid Cody and it was Cody's responsibility to pay the kids. So really, they have to sue Cody, they'll say. But is, and that's really the loopholes that these reality contracts work around. They'll say, well, we paid Cody a lump sum and under his contract with the show, he has to pay the kids, not us. We pay one payment. It's a way for them to reduce liability and to reduce exposure. They also don't hire any of them as employees and they use them as contractors. However, that doesn't stop contestants of shows from suing because contestants on My 600 Pound Life are not employees either, and they have sued. Mothers of cast members on other TV shows in the UK have sued production companies when their children have also by suicide. So is there a possibility for litigation here? Absolutely. Did the production company and Warner Brothers contribute to causing harm to Garrison as well as to other members of this family? Listen, these family members have signed a deal with the devil. They have sold out their lives and they've given a network control of everything. Every single part of their lives is being paid for by a network. Their stories, their life stories are owned by a network. They have sold out and exploited their children. And I have to be honest here and be very frank to all Sister Wives viewers when I say this. Even the wives, despite the fact that Cody was the one that controlled the contracts for a very long time, as parents of minor children, any one of those wives under the law could have said no and removed their children from filming. Any one of those mothers could have removed themselves from filming. Cody had likely signed a contract and promised that his children would perform so he could get sued for breach of contract, but requirements within the state requires that generally both parents must consent to filming. So if Christine would decide if Christine would decide tomorrow, I'm not going to have Truly on the show anymore, Cody couldn't do anything to stop her. He can't force her to say that it's okay. Truly is the only minor child that, isn't, that he doesn't have with Robin. Now, on the flip side, Cody, because he's a patriarch and he's in a cult and he has full control and he has financial control of these women, most people will say they didn't have the capability of saying no to him, nor did they have the capability to pull away from him. All of them had the capability to pull away from him from the point in time that they left Cody. None of them had to continue on with the show. Any one of them could have left. They could have even sued TLC for breach of contract or for an, you know, discrimination because these women are women they could sue the production company because of Cody's bullying and harassment of them and say that they were discriminated against by Cody and the show through the show any one of these women could have left and cut their contract and sued TLC none of them did all of the women that continue on the show now are continuing on under the guise of exploitation of themselves and their kids and I have to remind all of you that none of these children consented to saying to being on reality television. And for those of you that say that Garrison was adults, an adult, and he didn't have to appear on the show, in this culture, again, we'll go back to how men rule the roost. 
you are taught that you're not supposed to say no. And there's a likelihood that there's this family understands that whether or not they appear on the show, they will be discussed on the show. Think of the last time Logan was actually on the show. Never. But Logan's name still gets brought up every season. We rarely ever see Leon. They get brought up every season. We rarely ever see Maddie anymore. We rarely ever see Hunter. We rarely ever see Hayden. We rarely ever see Aspen. And when we do, it's very brief. So the children understand that if they don't participate, they're going to be talked about anyway. And so they could be manipulated and coerced to participate under the guise of, well, if you're not on the show anyway, you're not going to be able to defend yourself. So you might as well come on and defend yourself. The reality here is that every single one of the adults in this family failed their children by exploiting them for profit. Cody exploited all of them. He is the top. But the wives, even though they're in a cult and even though they don't have the psychological belief that they can say no to him, under the law, all of them could have said no. Under the law, all of them could have stopped this. They would have had to work through indoctrination. They would have to work through, you know, what it would mean for breaking up the family. But all of them could have said no. And when the family started falling apart, all of them could have dialed back and removed the kids from the show so the exposure to the show would no longer damage the children. Going through a divorce and a family splitting up is one of the most psychologically stressful times, not only for a par- for the um, adults, but also for kids and even for adult children. Family conflict and high family f- conflict and violent conflict in families is also stressful. TLC monetized all of this and knew that there was real life consequences for this. And production companies and the network did not exercise any safety or provide a safe work environment or addressed medical or mental health concerns. Did at any point after she, you hear that Garrison is struggling with his mental health, do you ever hear follow-up from producers, which we hear producers talk all the time on the show. Do you ever hear follow-up about how he's going to get into therapy? Never, because it didn't happen. They had a responsibility that once they knew that this was affecting the kids, to step in and either stop it or remove them and get them help. But they didn't. And that's where I think a basis for a lawsuit would have the best chance. Now, the other problem here is that Janelle would have to decide that she's going to step outside and not want to be a part of the show and actually sue them. Now, another question is, can the show be canceled because of this? Absolutely. Shows have been canceled over deaths of castmates all the time. Reality shows where there is tragedy, death, or suicide, shows can be canceled in the middle of it. When when a cast member on MTV's Buck Wild passed away, they canceled the show. There was a death a couple years ago on a reality show in the UK. It never hit second season. There have been numerous shows that have stopped filming once a death happens. But then there's other shows like My 600 Pound Life where they keep on going because they have sort of a carousel, a merry-go-round of cast members, and it's always someone new. But on this show with recurring cast members, going back to the scene and going back to their trauma, it's going to be so traumatic for everyone in this family to go back. And I will say this as I end this right here. On top of any sort of legal ramifications, This family, in my opinion, and I am not a psychologist, but I will say they need psychological therapy. They need trauma-informed therapy to not only manage this death, but also what Cody has done to them. And right now, a lot of them are currently focused on making money. And I understand they need to get back to work, but what they're failing to see and recognize is that in their need to get back to work, in their need to get back to normalcy, There isn't a stop or a pause to understand what contributed to Garrison ending his life and why did it get there? Because you have to remember that final text message that Garrison sent was to producers of the show. And that final text message where he let them know why he was doing this and he was going to end his life and he wanted to hate them, but he couldn't, that text message is more than likely the reason why the production company isn't saying a word. That text message that he sent to work to the workplace 
is the reason why TLC is likely not saying the word because Garrison made it known why he was doing this. Garrison was made known that his mental health had deteriorated because of it. And that's why TLC isn't saying anything. And that's probably why Puddle Monkey is down because they don't want the exposure. And at this point, if they were to say anything, even I'm a sorry could be an admissions of guilt in the court of law. So we'll have to see whether or not the show gets canceled and if they decide to file a lawsuit. Here's the thing, in the state of Arizona, a surviving spouse can file a lawsuit, any living child of the person can file a lawsuit, a living guardian or parent can file it, or a representative of their estate, an executor of their estate. In this case, Janelle could sue, or if he has appointed one of his siblings, one of his siblings as an executor of the estate, they could sue. And we'll just have to wait and see if that happens. I really don't know what's gonna happen here. I think it'll depend on, I feel like if the show gets canceled, you'll, you might see lawsuits. I honestly, I don't know. I really don't. But can she sue? 100%. Would she be successful? It would be very difficult, but it wouldn't be impossible. So this has been a very long video. I apologize ahead of time in advance, but what are your thoughts about this topic? Make sure to leave a comment. If you have something to say, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet subscribed. Thank you so much for watching. Bye guys.